everybody and welcome to the 7th Chuai High Tov performance video where I will be looking at Artflow, an app available on Android. I will mainly focus on how Chuai handles the app in terms of speed and how the Hypen H1 copes with pressure sensitivity on Artflow. The app takes like a whole minute to load up which can seem like forever. My advice is not to click around when it's loading otherwise the app freezes and closes down. Be patient and let it load. Despite how tediously slow it is at loading up, Artflow actually performs flawlessly on Chuai High 12. But before we get to how it performs, I want to walk through the interface really quickly. At the top right hand corner is the tiny circle button to show the interface. However, when you draw on the canvas, the interface hides away again. Clicking and holding on the tiny circle will then pin the interface in place. Starting with the right side of the interface, there are two sliding bars, the top one is for changing the brush size and the bottom one is for the opacity of the brush. At the very bottom of the right hand side is the undo and redo buttons. Like in many apps, I feel having the undo and redo buttons are inconvenient on the right side because I cannot access them quickly with my left hand, which is free while I am drawing with my right hand. However, Artflow does have a settings option which allows you to swap the interface around. Just above the brush size changing bar is a small circle outlined in white. This is where the colour palette is hidden. Artflow doesn't have any colour theme options like many Android apps, however I still like the circular colour palette as choosing colours and shades in this format is quite easy. Now let's go to the top right hand side. The first icon along here is for creating a symmetry line which mirrors any brush stroke made. This line can be rotated and repositioned around the canvas using the small icons in the middle of the line. Whenever you use a tool, a small icon appears in the bottom right hand corner. Clicking this icon will cancel the tool. Next icon along the top right is for the drawing tools, which is sectioned into two. Shapes and Guides. The shapes consist of line, circle, rectangle and ellipse while the guides consist of line, oval, focal and smooth. The shapes are very easy to use click and drag system, while the guides show an orange overlay which you can draw along like a ruler or stencil. The guides can be repositioned around the canvas. If you use a free version, you will sometimes get a notice offering to buy the upgrade. With Artflow Advanced, you will have access to the brush library, more layers, unlimited undo, export as PSD, advanced selection tool, and gradient film. I like the performance of Artflow on Chuai High 12, so I'm just going to buy it. Let's talk about the brushes. With the brush icon already selected, clicking on the icon again brings up the brushes palette. Here there is quite a large selection of brushes which are categorised in tabs. The first tab has normal pen type brushes, then there's the pencils, paints, airbrushes, patterns, shapes and custom brushes tab. I'm swatching a few here so you can see the variety available. The brushes palette is truly very comprehensive in comparison to majority of apps available to Chuai High 12. Also notice how fast the app performs here. The strokes are fast and virtually no lag when I'm drawing, even when I use effect brushes which would usually lag in fast apps. But in Artflow everything is nice and smooth. Clicking twice on any brush opens up the brush properties where you can adjust many different options including blend mode at the very bottom. If the brush properties are adjusted, two additional icons appear at the top. One which allows you to save to custom brushes tab and the other icon resets any changes made to the brush. Next to the brushes is the eraser. This eraser has all the same features as the brushes tool. Then there's a smudge tool which also has all the features available to the brushes. This allows space to create so many effects using different brushes to erase and smudge. You can see here I have set smudge to watercolour. Using hard pressure has given it a sort of colour burn effect creating a fire look and using softer pressure gives a smoke effect. The fill bucket fills in using the solid colour that is selected in the colour palette. 
For users who have purchased the advanced upgrade can click on the bucket icon again and select the gradient fill tool. The gradient can be adjusted and rotated. Gradient mode can be found along the bottom where you can choose from linear, radial, conical and square. The icon next to mode is gradient wrap where you can choose from clamp, repeat and mirror to get different colour effects. Next you have what looks like a sliding bar. The gradient fill will always choose white for the second colour. By clicking on the second circle, the colour can be changed. The slider will change the length of the colour blend. This gradient tool is very useful to have and very few Android apps have a gradient tool especially one with this many adjustment options. Finally along the top right is the selection tool. It's another very comprehensive tool. Selecting it shows more icons next to the brushes icon and then another set of icons across the bottom. There's the move tool, resize, rotate, mirror horizontally and vertically, rotate left and right by 90 degrees and revert to original. Along the top is selection modes as well as an icon to cancel the selection. On to the left side, first up is the layers palette. Small eye icon to hide layer and the padlock icon is for alpha locking the layer. Clicking on the layer shows many more options. The layer itself cannot be renamed, but option include opacity, blend mode, various actions including an effects list where you can edit stuff like brightness, hue, blur, curves and more. It almost feels like I'm using a mini version of Photoshop on Android. Finally, there's the import options on the bottom. The small plus icon on the top is for creating a new layer and the circle at the very bottom of the layers palette is for changing canvas colour. This grid-like icon opens Artflow's gallery. This is where all the images created in Artflow will save. You can create a new canvas as well as access the settings from here but these two options can also be accessed from the main menu which I will show you in a minute. The maximum canvas size is 2560 by 2560 pixels. The proportions can be locked and there is also a presets page to choose preset sizes from. The icon at the top right accesses the settings menu. Between the three tabs, general, painting and input, there is a lot which can be optimised. This boxed arrow icon is to export the image. It can be saved as PNG, JPEG and for users who have the advanced version it can also be saved in layers as a PSD file. There is an option to choose between coloured background and transparent background. Next to exports is the main menu. From here you can access new image, gallery, setting and export image. Which makes me wonder why Artflow has separate icons for gallery and export when it's in the main menu anyway. Besides from that you can save the Artflow project in Artflow's format and also exit the app from here. The final three icons are cut, copy and paste which can only be used when using certain tools. Let's finally get to sketching. I'm using a fine line and a light grey colour for this. The strokes are able to keep up with the pen movement and has absolutely no parallax. There is a zero lag when drawing which is awesome. The canvas can be rotated and zoomed. A small dialog box along the bottom tells the user the amount of zoom and rotation. This is an incredibly useful feature which majority of Android apps don't have leaving the user clueless as to how much they have rotated or zoomed by. In addition to that, zooming and rotating has zero lag. The touch gestures work every time, unlike some apps I've tried before. The palm rejection is excellent in Artflow. For most apps, I have to use an art glove, but here I noticed only one random dot while sketching. And that was it, I was able to complete the whole drawing without an art glove and no more random dots, apart from that single one I got during sketching. I started colouring with a purple tone using the watercolour brush to shade and highlight. I could have used airbrush for shading, but I think I quite like the watercolour effect. I later decided to darken the outline with a darker purple using the alpha lock. 
Then I changed the colouring part using the hue and saturation to achieve a pinky purple colour. Once I had finished the milk carton, I chose the PSD format and used Share to save to Dropbox so I could easily open it up on my MacBook Pro. I also made sure to save the project in Artflow as well. So what do I think of Artflow on the Chuai Hi 12? Well I think on the Chuai Hi 12, Artflow has the best performance when it comes to Android app. Until I had tried Artflow, I kept switching between Medibang, Sketchbook and Painter. These three apps have pros and cons, with lag being a common issue with large canvas and a few layers. Artflow has smooth zooming and rotation. The touch gestures are very responsive. The strokes are fast with no parallax. The app does take a while to load, but after that there is absolutely no lag. Artflow also sports some very comprehensive tools such as the brushes and the effects like hue and saturation on the layers palette. The palm rejection also works to an exceptional standard on the Hi12. Artflow is the best performing app on the Chuai Hi12 for Android in my opinion. And if it's a requirement to find a con then the only thing I can say is a recording feature like the sketchbook and painter would be a truly handy feature for Artflow. Especially since the several screen recording apps I have tried on Chuai's Android don't work or make the Chuai lag a lot to the point it freezes up. That brings me to the end of this performance review. If you're new to this channel, I do have many more performance reviews which you may be interested in. Just check out my channel playlists for them. Like and subscribes are always loved and appreciated. Until next time, bye!